everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Xterra Oak Mountain. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas, as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, the original triathlon brand, Premium Plus Sports, and of course our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, a legend. He's in the Hall of Fame, and he's, it's not often that you're in the Hall of Fame and you're still racing. 21 Xterra Worlds, top 10 16 times. One in 2015, I think, is when he won his 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 first Xterra World Championship. Mr. Josiah Midow joins us. How you doing, Josiah? Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Always a treat. I know we've chatted on the radio before. Yeah. yeah. So, 44, 45. What the hell are 44. you? 44. Yeah, 45 in a couple months. Yeah. So, <laughs> with before COVID hit, 2019, you're starting to think I've been doing this a long time. 2020 might be my last year. Yeah, it made sense. 2020 was going to be my last year as a professional. And, right. You know, kind of move on, hang it up. <laughs> but then COVID hits. COVID hits. Yeah. You, you know, you think oh, I'll just fire up for one last crack at it. And, yes. And then you don't really know what to do. I mean, nobody knew what to do. Exactly. You know, was, we didn't know if anything's ever coming and, back. Yeah. Everything disappeared. Our most sports ground to a halt. Yep. So, yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah, we didn't know what was going on there. And, and when did you decide, well, okay, COVID's over, what the hell, maybe I'll uh, come back and race? Yeah, I think, I mean, partly the pandemic, it kind of made you prioritize a little bit and kind of realize what's important. And at first, in the beginning of the pandemic, you're like, well, you know, sports is the least important thing, you know, let's, right. you know, focus on what's important. Then you kind of realize, well, hey, you know, this is really this what I really like important. to do. And this I really, is it. You know, this is my life. Brings me joy. And, it, yes. you know, it gives you something to focus on. And yes. I was at the, the doctor the other day for an annual physical, and she was wondering why I was still racing. And she's like, so you like to have a goal. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I, I guess so. I don't yeah. know. You know. Yeah. And I'm sure when you go in for your physical, they're like, we <laughs> bring all the other doctors in here. We've never seen anything like this. This guy's resting heart rate is 40. They yeah. like the blood draws there. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's easy to find a vein. Yeah, it's not It's exactly. not a toughie. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Your son Sullivan is racing professionally now, and you've been able to race against him and with him. How fun has that been? Uh, it's been amazing. That's definitely kind of rekindled my my passion for the sport yes. a lot. And, and part of why I'm racing the World Cup is to follow him around to these World Cup venues and be a little bit of a chaperone to him and his teammate Keller. And seeing where you know, now you got the World Cup, uh, we've got the you know short track. You've, there's been a lot of innovations for Xterra, and you're a guy who's been here really from the be not the beginning, but close to the beginning. Xterra seems like it's in a really good place right now. I think so. I mean, it's kind of coming back. You right. know, it was you know went through some some growing pains mm -hmm. when it you know went really global, and then of course with the pandemic, but. What happened is that in Europe, it, it kept growing and got right. really strong. And even during the pandemic, they kept racing. They kept with the European series. Um, and it got really strong there. And Nico brought in the short track for spectators. Yes. This World Cup we've been talking about for years with Janet Clark, the yes. former president. Yeah. And, and before 2020, she said, 2020, we're doing World Cup. And that, why, that was why it was going to be my last year. Yes. She talked about... We're going to race New Zealand, South Africa, Europe. And yes. I'm like, I'm in. Let's do it. One last go. This will be my last year. Yes. And then it was shelved <laughs> for a while. And, and so now World Cup's back. And, and so are and you. So, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So how many times had you, had you done Xterra, like 50, the World Championship 15 times before you won it? How long was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, my 15th try. Your 15th try. try. Yeah. Because <laughs> you were, how many times did you get second, third? You were in. You were in the top 10, uh, yeah, or like I, I said, know. top 10, 16 <laughs> times, there 16 times. <laughs> what was the difference in 2015? Because you didn't you have bike problems there that day too? Yeah, I, well, nothing major, but I, I crashed twice on the bike, once on the <laughs> nothing run. Nothing major. If bent this, my derailleur. If, you were, if we were sitting at Ironman right now, and I'm saying to somebody, yeah, you crashed twice, yeah, it was the worst day of my life. You're like, yeah, I crashed twice at Xterra, it's no big deal. Yeah, I always say you'd never race with your plan A for no. Xterra. Yeah. Yeah. It's always... You plan B, C, C or D. D. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. So, no, I, I think my fitness had been there for a couple years, yes. but you just had to have your day. Right. And that's kind of how Xterra works. And so winning it, was it everything you thought it would be when you finally got that title? It, it was. I mean, it was a long time coming, and, um, yeah, it was really a, a dream come true. It was the pinnacle of my career, for sure. 36 wins. <laughs> 
That, that is, that's a hell of a career. And how many, how many times did you win the U.S. National Championships? Uh, 15. 15? Yeah. <laughs> that's unbelievable. But when we look at Xterra now, it is dominated by international, right, by the Europeans. And it's been like that for a while. Like before you won in 15, was it Tobin? Yep, it Michael Tobin, Tobin won in 2000. 2000. Yep. Wow. So it was 15 years mm -hmm. in between. Are we now, obviously, your son, is, is we seeing a new generation coming in of Americans who can be a factor? I think so. Um, and I think you see that a little bit worldwide, but um, there's kind of a little bit of a gap right. in, in the talent pool there. And right now, the generation that's coming in is super focused, super strong. And you see that across the board. I know right. in triathlon for sure. No question. Um, just the, the coaching, the work ethic. Mm -hmm. I mean, these kids are dialed. I call them kids, but right. now they're into, a lot of them are in their 20s now. Um, but they're dominating. Europe is, is going gangbusters right. and they're super strong. But they've, they've always been strong. So uh, Sullivan's on the podium project. And is a podium project for, is he planning to race the roads? Yes, so that's draft legal yes. triathlon. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the number one focus in the whole, the whole concept. The you know project podium yes. is to to put an American on the podium yes. in the Olympic Games. That's right. the, the goal of the program. And these kids are young. They're they're catching kids before college. Yes. Um, and so it's a developmental team through the college years. That's what Project Podium is. Instead of the collegiate recruitment program, which is post college, right. you know, grabbing swimmers and runners. And trying them to, to try to bike, yeah. Yeah, so in a lot of cases, it's waiting a little too long for some of these Well, guys. especially if you think about it, you're trying to compete with the Alistair Brownleys and Javier Gomez and, and the next generation of those guys who've been racing since they're eight, nine years old in triathlon, not exactly. just swim, bike, run. And it's worked on the, on the woman's side. It's worked yeah. really well, mm -hmm. the, identifying Gwen Jorgensen and Katie Zafaris and Summer Rappaport and all these athletes out of college. But on the men's side, it just has not worked. So we've, yeah. we've got to come up with something. Podium Project looks like yeah. the Well, the and now they have, I don't know, they can probably tell you, yeah, but yeah. 27, I don't know, division, you know, one, two, three programs right. uh, for women. Yes. But zero for men. And so this That's is kind really of the where, answer for that. This, this is what they're men. trying to do instead of that. Yeah. The collegiate program that they have, the NCAA program they have for women. Yeah. Exactly. And they're hoping that'll be a pipeline as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the women are, they've got a really good oh pipeline established. Yeah. Uh, so this last year, like we said, you, you did your first worlds outside of the U S and you got 12th, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, the difference in, and you've raised this race probably from the very beginning. What is it about this course that you like? Um, I like that this is a good combination of every kind of skill mm -hmm. that you encounter in Xterra. I would describe it as, you know, some East coast technical with the roots and rocks, right? You have a downhill that's a lot like Rocky Mountain downhill. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Keller was just saying a lot of this, this rain and wet and stuff is just like what he rides in Oregon. So yep. it's kind of like everything kind of all packed into one course. That's so it ends cool. up, you know, you have to be a really well-rounded um, mountain biker, triathlete to be able to do well here. Now, is Sullivan able to ride, uh, ride the mountain bike while he's doing all the, the training for the roads? Yeah, he is. What's pretty cool is they, they recognize that, uh, well, for one, for longevity, they need to keep interested and, right. you know, keep it fun. Right. Um, but there's a lot of crossover. Between, Total lot of crossover, yeah. Um, you know, the, the skills that they learn in triathlon and being, the, the bike prowess that you need in draft legal triathlon now has, has risen to a lot higher level. Right. And so, you know, the coach there, Parker Spencer, sees yes. it as a, as a big benefit to, to have these guys have some off-road skills. So how have really you, likes it. How have you had to adapt to age, right? In terms of, <laughs> uh, I remember interviewing Rod Dixon and some of the top runners, and they were always like, "Listen, I could do the same workouts when I was, th was when I was 25, but I just need a day off in between. You know, I can I can do the hard workouts, but I need more recovery." Yeah, and I would say that's been the case for me. I had a, a very specific formula when I was in my 30s that right. was working really well for me. Yes, um, and I don't, I can't follow that now. And that was that cons was a lot of intensity. It was right. a lot of back to back yes. intensity. You know, a lot of times it was Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, hard threshold intervals, Friday, Saturday, hard threshold mm. intervals, Sunday long. And I just can't pack all that in one week now. You know, kind of the same thing where 
I hit all those same workouts over 10 days. Well, yeah. Over two weeks, <laughs> yeah, three weeks. Man. Yeah. But you know, but you, you know, you've got to do the high intensity with the, the type of stuff you guys do. How, how's yeah. the racing in Europe different than here in the States? Um, they just, there's a deeper, um, talent pool, mm. I think. And so, you know, you're not racing three or four guys, you're racing 20, right. 25 yes. guys. And so it's pretty cutthroat competition. And so they, they thrive on that, right? The, the cream rises to the top and you get some right. pretty fast, talented guys. And they're doing that week in, week out. So like last year, the world championship was my second Xterra for the season. The second one of the yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the fact you got 12th is pretty amazing. Uh, I, I, was, I was shooting for top 10, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you yeah. never know. Yeah. Now, have you, how many times have you raced uh, Sullivan as a pro? Twice, just the the two times last year. So Beaver Creek he was won, Sullivan's right? very first pro race. And he, he wins the race he overall. Won, won outright, yeah. So he kicked old man's butt. He, he did. It was not a competition. I You weren't even in no, the ballpark. I saw him at the start line and the finish line. <laughs> and that was it. I, I gave him a tap in T2. I saw him in oh, you did. transition two before he dusted before me on the he, run. Before he <laughs> took off. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so cool. And what was the second one? Uh, and then Italy. Oh, Italy. Yeah. So I was 12th. He was 14th. Oh, so you got him so back. You own him. So this is, this is the rubber match. Yeah, you know, it's, you're only See, as good you, as your last race. You're only as good as your last race. <laughs> what, being in Xterra for so long, what have, you, what have you learned about yourself through all this? Um, I think for me it's just been really about kind of finding my limits and, mm -hmm. and really seeing what my potential is. And I feel like I, I was able to ultimately discover that. And now I'm kind of at a point where I, I still I love being in shape. I love racing. Yes. I love the competition. And if that lands me in the professional field, then so be it. And, right. And we'll see what the future holds. From a coaching perspective, obviously when you're training and racing, the, the training can be, you can, you can be very selfish, right? It's like I'm going out riding, I'm running. But when you're coaching, it, it sometimes brings, a, brings it home that this means a lot to people. Yeah. And you get to watch people uh, it becomes very cathartic. They change their lives through this sport, yeah. which you, you're worried about your split times and things like that. These guys are trying to get to a finish line and right. try to, and finish the bike ride is a big deal. Has that is being able to be part of those journeys. Has that helped you stay in the sport? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I think experiencing that so that you can share those experiences yeah. with your athletes, but then also kind of realizing that like their goals are just as important as an elite athlete's goals. They might, have a, they might not have the same kind of pressure, right. um, but it's just important in their life as it is for the triathlete. And right. so it, you know, whatever, whatever that means, but um, you know, it could be finishing their first race, yes. it could be top 10, could be getting on the podium, um, but yeah, it's an important part of their lives. And they, they carve out time for it just like a prof professional would. Yeah. So when you look back and when you your first races, who were some of the pros you were racing back in the day? Well, you mentioned Ned and you, over it, uh, you yeah. raced Ned. Well, he was, he was kind of on his way out. I raced him in some local mountain bike races. Like he'd come to the yeah. GoPro games. It used to be the Teva mountain games. Yeah, Teva mountain yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, so I would, I would see him kind of around it, but I think he, well, I was saying I, the first time I saw Xterra on TV, he was winning the world championship. Yes, that might've been 99 or something. Yeah. So, that's what kind of said, ah, oh, Xterra, that looks like fun. Exactly. So I got into it when he was getting out. But like you said, that was his retirement. It was. I don't know what you call it after that. When he's <laughs> he retired, still winning races. He retired from mountain biking and then gets into <laughs> Xterra and goes into the Hall yeah. of Fame. But like Michael Tobin, he had retired right when I was starting, but I, had, I adventure raced with him in China. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so did some, some You did mile with seven him. with him. Was it mile seven? No, it one? was Wulong Somewhere. Mountain right, right, Quest. Right, right. But I think, I think that had turned into that, so... I had forgotten yeah. that you were into the whole, because it's funny, that's a part of endurance that a lot of people don't know about, that the, the yeah. whole uh, adventure <laughs> racing and the, all of those amazing athletes and those, those you know, four, five, six day races across yeah. Madagascar yeah. And, and stuff <laughs> like that. Did you, you obviously enjoyed that. Oh yeah, yeah, so much fun, uh, big time commitment. To, oh to my be able God, because you gotta learn all those sports. You gotta kayak, yeah. you gotta mountain bike, you gotta run, you gotta mainly orienteer. Yeah. figure out where to head or, or make sure you got a good guy who yeah, can do that. I, I'm much better at following. Yeah. It's, that is wild. Yeah, uh, so a lot of fun, but yeah, I mean, Conrad Stoltz was, yes. you know, probably my biggest role model 
in the sport. I the mean, he was man. winning everything yeah, yeah. He when was I winning started. Everything, yeah. yeah, and so it was, you know, following his lead and yes. you know trying to be more like Conrad was kind of the name of the game early. So this year, I mean, you're talking about retiring after 2020. Are you in, what are you thinking about for next year? Ah, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think, why, why even think about why, it? Right? Why, just why put yourself. a number on it? Yeah, exactly. Why put limits on it. I don't know. Well, well and it, we'll it see. seems like with the World Cup just launching and, and um, more, it seems like there's more going on. And the short track side of this or fast track, do you like that? The short. I short like track? watching it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was just talking to Nico, Nicholas LeBron, yeah, who's yeah. world champion. And oh, he's, yeah. He's the race director in Europe. He's here and he's helping with the short track. He'll be commentating. Yep. Um, and the whole premise of the short track is to bring more viewers, yes. um, get people excited about Xterra. Um, and so I think I'm similar with a lot of other pros. I, I train for the longer distance event. And then you sort of fake your way through. You, yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I, I think it's really good. The, the Europeans that were racing short track back to back with the long course, I think it really did help develop that yeah develop the skills and i think it helps with the long course but it's it's not my specialty <laughs> for sure <laughs> well it's interesting because the olympics is sort of the same type of thing where you're doing a mixed you know the mixed relay yeah and those are really short and i think that that high intensity certainly doesn't hurt you when you're doing longer races absolutely yeah i think it's it's good stuff it's fun to watch <laughs> well, it's going to be fun to watch you and your son going at it this weekend on the rubber match and to see who can take who down. <laughs> race within the race. Well, there's a few other people to, to look for. So. Come on now. That's all that matters, man. Family. Right. That's what it's all about. Now, are the, you're all the, how many kids total? Three. Three, Three yeah. kids. Two every, boys and a girl. All into mountain biking? All into? Uh, not quite. Yeah. Not quite. But uh, my son, other son, Porter, just ran the state championship today. Uh, really colorado the two it, mile the two mile how do yeah. you do he was fourth good um, for him yeah so he's had a really good season um and then my daughter is she's she's dabbling but uh we don't talk about it so you she's, know i think the, she's <laughs> i think the key is, 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 is when they run and they swim that you can you can learn the bike you've got yeah. the engine and that's that's been the formula that's worked for us in the past and Obviously, it, it didn't Sullivan run in high school as well? He did, yep. He was focused on high school sports, and yes. triathlon's not one of them. <laughs> yeah, and then after, yeah. then, he, then he uses what he built engine-wise to do it. Exactly. Love yeah. it. Josiah, always a pleasure, man. Well, thanks, Bob. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Thanks for taking the time. No, nah, I love it. It's going to be really fun watching. I haven't been... I haven't been to an, I was in Ogden a number of years ago yeah, when Lance yeah. was racing, and I think oh, that was right. the last Exeter <laughs> I've been at, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, good to have you back here. Thank yeah, you, buddy. Thanks for coming. Josiah Midow has been our guest. Again, Breakfast with Bob from Exterra Oak Mountain. Hold on. We will be right back.